I don't make resolutions anymore. I have a word. So at my dinner table, we all go around the table and we say, what's your word for this year? Certainly during the time I was at Harvard, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. You pay a lot of money, uh, you know, for school, and then you have this pressure um, uh, to get out and get a job or to do something with it. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Living that believe in life. Out here, living that believe in life. Every day we live in that believe in life. Also like we live in that believe in life. Living life, yeah, so we're grinding it out. Every single day we'll be grinding it out. Also like we live in that believe in life. Oh, that believe in life. Oh. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know you're capable of more. You've got Michael Jordan level genius at something. So today let's live your best believe life and learn how billionaires think and get some success advice from the top. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Always keep learning with Bill Gates. Certainly during the time I was at Harvard, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Uh, the idea that software was this field that uh, was the opportunity was unbelievable. That became more obvious during the three year period I was here. Uh, but my dad had been a lawyer. I thought of mathematics, you know, like doing well in the Putnam. That was the coolest thing. Uh, and the computer software, I didn't think those people were as smart as the math people. So it's like, well, am I going to go into the easy field uh, or this really hard field? But uh, Anyway, math uh, was fantastic. When I finally picked and decided to go, go to Microsoft, then I got into a period from age uh, 19 uh, to about 40 where I wasn't able to look at the latest on you know, how tornadoes work or how mitochondria work. I was pretty monomaniacal. And when I was able to ask Steve, this is the year 2000, Steve Ballmer, uh, he, he mistakenly graduated, uh, but then he started at Stan, uh, <laughs> but I was trying to hire him, but his parents told him you're supposed to graduate, which was fine. But then he started at Stanford Business School and he was in his first year and I thought, oh, this is perfect. I'll get him to drop out of Stanford Business School. Uh, so in a certain sense, he is a dropout. Uh, uh, and he was very key to the success of Microsoft. I mean. Uh, he knew a lot of things. But during that period, I didn't get to do much. At Harvard, you know, I took all these courses because it was just so amazing that people were interested in talking about them. And uh, I, I have to say, I never went to a lecture during reading period or any, anything because the courses that I was actually signed up for, I finally started to work on those. Uh, so I was in Hillel the minute it would open to the minute it would close during reading period, trying to catch up on, on that other set of courses. So people say I'm a dropout, which is literally true, but <laughs> because I like college courses, the online college courses, there's a company called The Learning Company that I buy uh, tons and tons of their stuff, and I do you know, at least four or five courses a year. In a sense, I like uh, going to college more than anyone. Uh, so you know, I've sort of made sure my job, certainly post Microsoft, uh, that I get to spend my time meeting with scientists, uh, learning new things, you know, seeing what the hard problems are, in some cases giving money to people to take on uh, those very, very hard problems. Rule number two, think long term with Warren Buffett. I was wondering how do you decide what you invest your time and money in? Yeah, well, I, I, I like to find businesses that have good economics. Now, what, what are good economics? Well, good economics are a business that has some kind of a moat around it that makes its product or its service or its location or something a little more desirable than to the customer than any other sort of comparable product. Uh, you know, the number one candy bar in the last 30 or 40 years has been Snickers. People don't fool around with different candy bars. They fool around with different length dresses. They fool around, you know, with all kinds of things. But they don't fool around with candy bars because they figure, you know, they're going to go in and lay out 50 cents or whatever it is and put it in their mouth. And they're not going to, for 50 cents and putting it in your mouth, I mean, you're not going to say, I'll 
I'll, I'll put in, I'll lay out 45 cents and put something else in my mouth. So you find that very stable. And we like businesses that we think we can figure out where they're going to be in 10 or 15 years. I don't know where the information technology businesses are going to be in 10 or 15 years. I know where Snickers bars are going to be in 10 or 15 years. They're going to be selling just about the, you know, the way they do now. I know where Wrigley's gum is going to be in 10 or 15 years. There's not going to be a lot of innovation in, in, in chewing gum. Uh, the, and pe the Internet's not going to cause people to quit chewing gum either. I mean, at least, I mean, Gates may think so, but I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, it's predictability regarding the sustainability of a competitive advantage. Some, something special about a product. Rule number three, know your purpose with Oprah Winfrey. I don't make resolutions anymore. I have a word. So at my dinner table, we all go around the table and we say, what's your word? For this year okay. and my word is purpose my word for this year is purpose because when I look back on my you know how you can't even figure out what you did in a year because your life's so full yeah so another now I just go back and I look through my phone so I was doing that on yeah. New Year's Eve looking through the phone at all the pictures and all the stuff you've done and I did a lot of things but I didn't do a lot of things on purpose with intentional purpose so my thing this year is don't do anything unless you have an intention and a purpose behind it. Rule number four, be a student of observation with Grant Cardone. I'm a student of observation. I, I observe things. I remember being, being selling cars, saying this is stupid. First I learned how to do it. Right. Control the customer, the 12 steps. Right. And then I'm like, if I do 12 steps with everybody, I can't get to 30 units a month. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I started skipping steps. Right. Uh, I mean, because I wanted, I wanted those 10 car, car weeks. And the only way to do that was walk out there and just start offering people what they, had, what they, what they were going to ask me for anyway. Right. Can I get you a price, a payment, a down payment, a monthly payment? Can I get you everything you need? Right. I knew that it was just a matter of about 30 seconds. They were going to ask for it all. No doubt. So I just basically intercepted the customer, sped up the processes. And, and then I'm like, man, I, I started hitting 30, 36 units. 31 units in 14 days. I'm like, dude, mm. this is the way to do it. And then when I lost my job, because the dealer wasn't big enough, didn't think big enough himself, didn't 10X. When I left him, I didn't have any place to go in his company or his organization. I couldn't be a star there. Um, I went out and started teaching that. Hey, man. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? You got a book coming out, don't you? Uh, you just came out. Where can people get it? Get it on uh, Amazon, easiest spot, built to serve, right there. Let's go, man. If you guys don't know Evan, follow Evan Carmichael. He's got a new book out, Build to Serve. Go grab it today at Amazon. There's a good dude right here. Rule number five, have long-term goals with Elon Musk. Running a public company does, is, does have its drawbacks. Um, so you're not in a hurry? No. <laughs> Um, I mean, in the case of Tesla and SpaceX, um, we, we had to raise capital um, and, and we had kind of a complex equity structure that needed to be resolved by, by going public. Um, and um, and so, so I felt we, we kind of needed to do that in those two cases. We don't have to do that in SpaceX. I think, I think there's a good chance we will at some point in the future. But, but SpaceX's objectives are, are super long term. And, and the market is, is not. So I'm a bit worried that if we did go public, certainly if we went public too soon, that, it, the, the, that market pressure would, would force us to do uh, short-term things and abandon right. kind of long-term projects. Like uh, going to Mars. Right, going to Mars, very long-term. Rule number six, follow your gut with Jamie Kern Lima. When I look back at all the things I've, I've done, I've made so many mistakes, but when I look back at the things I've done right, it was always when I went with my gut and, and deciding to go into journalism was one of them. Because um, like you mentioned in, in the intro, I, was, uh, I went to graduate school at Columbia and everyone was getting these high paying jobs. And you, know, you pay a lot of money uh, you know, for school and then you have this pressure um, uh, to get out and get a job or to do something with it. And the average salary was 126000 that year out of Columbia Business School. And I took a job for 20 
23,500 um, because I went with what I wanted to do in my gut, what I was passionate about, which was you know other people's stories. And, and I, I took a job in the middle of Washington State at, at a small market, but I learned how to write and edit and, and shoot and film and, and, and everything and just put in the work to try and build a foundation. Mm -hmm. And rule number seven, the last one before a very special bonus clip is focus on the AI with Mark Cuban. Putin says the winner in AI controls the world. Yeah. China puts together a future plan saying, you know, whoever dominates in AI and they're subsidizing, you know, Tencent, Alibaba, et cetera. Yeah. Right. And that's right. They're, they're, that's, they the know it's portion. a race. It, it is a race. We cut our Office of Technology and Science to one person who was an assistant to Peter Thiel. That's where we stand. So when we talk about infrastructure jobs, you know, robots are built in Germany and they're getting bought by Chinese companies in some respects, and I think some Japanese companies bought as well. We don't build robots here very well, mm -hmm. right? I just invested in my first robotics company, Hire Robotics, that puts robots into companies. Um, it, they're in Kansas City, I think it is now. Um, but they, they lease and rent and sell robots into all these different types of circumstances to replace people. Huh. Right, but I had to learn. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's going to happen with or without me. But I wanted to learn what was going on. Those building up a robotics um, industry here, investing in our AI industry here, that's the new infrastructure. Yeah. Because if we don't do it, and China or Russia win those wars, we're SOL. Right. We're we're out of luck. Right. And so when we talk about the price of assets going up, when when if you're hiring, you know, if you're talking about intellectual assets, if you're hiring, like we were just saying, the price is skyrocketing. People are, you know, Montreal has become the, the center of the universe for computer vision. Um, it's not U.S.-based schools that are dominating any longer in those areas. We've got a lot of smart kids mm -hmm. at MIT, all different schools, right? And, and kids are starting to realize it's a place for them to go. And I'm out there telling people the first trillionaire is going to come from somebody who, who comes up with something Figures really unique yeah. in, in AI. Now, I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I want to know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? When you watch a video and you get motivated, the science says you have a 35% chance of following through. That's not enough. <laughs> but when you write down what time, what place, and how you're going to actually take action on it, you jump to 91% chance of following through. And when you have public accountability and you commit to other people that you're gonna do it, it jumps to 95% that you will follow through. So I want that for you, Believe Nation. I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. The general theme I would suggest is that all trends um, are overrated. And so uh, if you think about current uh, trends in technology, uh, you know, uh, uh, healthcare IT software, education software, overrated. SaaS enterprise software, really overrated. Um, Big data, cloud computing. If you hear those words, you need to think fraud. You need to run away as fast as you possibly can. Um, and, um, and the reason these buzzwords um, tell you that something um, is, th there's th these buzzwords are sort of like a tell in poker that people are bluffing and that there's nothing, that, there's, uh, that the business is not undifferentiated because the buzzwords tell you that it is one company of a category that's undifferentiated from the others in that category and therefore uh, are symptomatic somehow of, of um, a lot of competition and a bad, uh, a bad business idea. And so you, know, you don't want to be the fourth online pet food company. You don't want to be the 10th thin film solar panel company. You don't want to be the 1,000th restaurant in San Francisco. And so there is something about if you can describe um, what a company is doing um, very straightforwardly by uh, referencing um, uh, these, these buzzwords, these categories that already exist, um, that's actually a sign that it's a pretty bad, uh, that, it's, uh, that it's a pretty bad idea. If you want another video on how billionaires think, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. You know, that's not really how it works. If you don't love it, don't expect others will either. Your relationship with time is such a key component of your life because when you get caught in a routine, time goes so quickly.